Adugo sat beneath the star apple tree, crying with the broken shade of her clay water pot scattered around her feet. She had been running hurriedly, trying to make it home before sunset. But in her haste, she tripped, and her mistress' precious pot slipped from her grabs and broke before she could catch it. She couldn't go home without the water. She couldn't go home with the broken pot. Fear clutched her heart, and all she could do was sit there helpless and cry. As the afternoon began to give way to evening, she heard the sound of footsteps approaching. What is this beauty doing here all alone with her face graced with tears? The voice startled her, and before she could look up, there stood a tall man, dressed in earthly tones of a hunter. He held a bow in one hand and bundle of traps in the other, his face a mask of curiosity. I broke my mistress' pot, and she will punish me. She sent me to fetch water, and now I have none. The hunter knelt beside her, looking at the broken pieces. He said to her, A pot can be replaced, but the heart that breaks with fear cannot. He extended a hand, gently lifting her to her feet. Come, I will take you home and no harm will come to you. The broken pot is not the end of the world. Her tear-filled eyes met his, and for the first time since the accident, she felt there is light at the end of the tunnel. He was a stranger, yet there was something about his presence that made her feel safe. As they walked through the forest, the hunter led the way with short, steady steps, and Adugo felt a strange mixture of relief and nervousness. The weight of her fear had lessened, but it had not disappeared completely. She still dreaded what awaited her at home, but with the hunter by her side, perhaps her mistress would be less harsh. As they moved, Adugo kept taking a quick look at the hunter, wondering who he was. His strong build, his confident stride, he looked like a man who had seen much of the world beyond the small village where she lived. Why are you out here alone? she asked. It's not often that anyone comes this far into the forest. The hunter stared at her and smiled. I'm a hunter. I came to check my traps. I know these paths well, even the ones hidden from most eyes. Adugo nodded, her mind still swelling with unanswered questions. Why was he being so kind to her? Strangers in the village rarely showed such care, especially to someone like her, a maid with no real standing. The hunter seemed to sense her unease and continued, What's your name? My name is Adugo. Adugo, such a beautiful name for a beautiful girl. I am Udodi. Now we are no longer strangers, are we? A small smile tugged at her lips. No, I suppose we are not. As they approached Adugo's village, her steps slowed, her fear returned. They reached the compound and almost immediately her mistress' voice rang out from within the house. Where is that useless girl? Adugo, do you think I sent you to fetch water from the northern mountains? Fear engulfed Adugo, and before she could move, Udodi stepped forward. Stay here, he told Adugo. Let me handle this. He strode into the compound in confidence. Adugo's mistress, a tall, angry-looking woman, came out of the hut and met the stranger. Who are you? she asked. Udodi bowed his head slightly in respect. I am Udodi, a hunter from the neighboring village. I found Adugo in the forest. She had an accident and her pot broke. She's been through enough for one day. Surely a broken pot can be forgiven. Adugo's mistress looked at her with a hard expression. Forgiving, she's part. That girl is good for nothing. She breaks everything she touches and now I'm supposed to forgive her? Adugo shrank back, her heart pounding. 
She had expected this. No amount of pleading or reason ever softened her mistress' heart. Before her mistress in Kemnili could unleash more venom, her daughter Olachi came in. Mother, what's going on? Immediately, Udochi caught her eyes. She had never seen a man like him before, tall with the presence of a warrior, yet his face looked kind. In the village, the men were either too brash or too dull for her liking, but this hunter was something different. Olachi stepped forward, neglecting her mother's rant. Her focus was entirely on Udodi. Who are you, she asked, and what brings you to our home? Udodi looked at her, but his attention remained on Adugo, who stood behind him trembling. As I told your mother, he said, I found Adugo in the forest. She had an accident and I brought her home. Olachi smiled. How kind of you, she murmured, with her eyes fixed on him. Adugo watched her with confusion. She had always known Olachi to be vain and selfish, never taking interest in anyone unless it benefited her. Why was she so interested in Udodi? As Adugo's mistress continued to fume, Udodi decided it was time to leave. The girl has been through enough, he said. Please forgive her this time. Everyone makes mistakes. Adugo's mistress, though still fuming, saw the way her daughter was looking at Udodi in admiration and her anger cooled slightly. Fine, she said, but she will go without food for two nights. That will teach her a lesson to be more careful. Adugo's heart sank, but she knew this was as much mercy as she would receive. Before Udo left, he turned to Adugo. Remember, a broken pot is not the end of the world, he said softly. Then, with one last glance at the mistress, he walked away. As he disappeared down the path, Olachi grabbed Adugo's arm and pulled her aside. Who is he? She demanded, her eyes wide with excitement. Adugo hesitated, unsure of how to respond. He, he's just a hunter. He found me after I broke the pot. Just a hunter, Olachi scoffed. That man is no ordinary hunter. I must know more about him. The next morning, Adugo woke to the familiar weight of her mistress' commands. Her two-day punishment without food had already begun, and though her stomach ached, she forced herself to rise and complete her chores. The sun had barely risen when she made her way to the stream with another pot, this time careful with her steps. Her mind wandered back to the events of the previous day. She still couldn't understand why Udodi had gone out of his way to help her. It was unusual for anyone, especially a man, to show concern for someone like her. Adugo was just a maid, with no family name or status. But Udodi had treated her with kindness and respect, something she was not used to. As she approached the stream, she saw a familiar figure near the water's edge. Udodi was there, kneeling by the bank, cleaning his traps. Her heart skipped a bit at the sight of him. She had hoped to thank him properly, but she hadn't expected to see him again so soon. She gathered some courage and stepped forward. Udodi, she called softly. He looked up. Oh, Adugo, it's good to see you again. Adugo gripped the new water pot tightly. I wanted to thank you for helping me yesterday. I don't know what I would have done if you hadn't come. Udo smiled warmly, standing up and brushing off his hands. You don't need to thank me. I couldn't leave you there like that. Anyone with a heart would have done the same. Adugo shook her head. No, not everyone would have. Most people wouldn't have even looked at me, let alone help. How are you? He asked. With genuine concern. I am fine, she lied. 
Knowing that fine was far from the truth. The constant mistreatment by her mistress, the endless chores and the lack of food bothers her. But she couldn't admit that to him. She couldn't burden someone who had already done so much for her. Before she could say more, she realized how late it was. I have to go, she said quickly. I will be in trouble if I don't get home soon. Udo denoted, be careful, Adugo. With a great smile, she turned and hurried back to the village. Her heart was lighter than it had been in days. For a brief moment, she had felt seen, and that feeling stayed with her as she made her way back to her mistress' house. While she was at the stream, Olachi had spent the morning lounging in the shade of the compound, thinking about Udodi. He wasn't like any man she had met before, and that intrigued her. Her mother in Kemdelim, however, was less consigned with Olachi's daydreams and more focused on Adugu. The mistress had always seen her as a nuisance, a girl who had been left in her care after her parents' death. The fact that Adugo was her late husband's best friend's daughter made no difference to her. She was nothing more than a servant to be used and punished as she saw fit. Olachi, on the other hand, had always been her mother's favorite and she had grown up with a sense of entitlement. She believed that anything she wanted, she could have. And now she wanted Udodi. Later that day, when Adugo returned from the stream, Olachi pulled her aside with excitement. Tell me about him, she demanded with eagerness. Tell me everything about Udodi. Adugo cut off guard, blinked in surprise. There is not much to say, she said, confused about Olachi's sudden interest. He's just a hunter. He helped me when I broke the pot. Olachi's expression darkened for a moment. He's not just a hunter, she said sharply. You are so simple, Adugo. Can't you see how extraordinary he is? Adugo frowned, not understanding why Olachi was so focused on Udodi. She had never shown interest in anyone like that before. Why does it matter, she asked, unsure if she wanted to know the answer. Because I've decided I want him, and I always get what I want. Adugo's heart sank. She didn't know why, but hearing Olachi's words left a bitter taste in her mouth. Days passed, and Udo continued his visits to the forest, setting his traps and checking them regularly. But each time he returned to the village, Olachi made a point of seeking him out. She would wait for him at the market, pretending to be looking for stuffs until she see him pass. Then, with a charming smile, she would approach him, asking questions about his haunt, feigning interest in his work. At first, Udodi was polite, but distance. He answered her questions briefly and always found a way to excuse himself. He had sensed her interest from the beginning, but something about her puts him off. One afternoon, Olachi finally confronted him. Why do you avoid me? She asked. I've made it clear that I am interested in you, Udodi. Any man in this village would be honored to have my attention. Udodi remained calm, though his patience was wearing thin. Olachi, I respect you as a woman of this village, but I'm not interested in you that way. And why not? Am I not beautiful enough for you? Udodi shook his head. It has nothing to do with your beauty. I'm just not interested. Olachi's face twisted with rage. If not me, then who? Are you saying you prefer that worthless maid, Adugo? You would choose her over me? The hunter was silent. Olachi's eyes widened in disbelief. You are serious, she whispered, her voice shaking with fury. 
You would choose a servant over me. Adugo has a heart of gold. She is kind and humble, and she does not seek to manipulate others for her own gain. Those are qualities that matter more to me than status or beauty. Olachi's face flushed with anger. Without another word, she spun on her heel and stormed away, her mind already plotting her next move. When Olachi returned home, her fury was barely contained. She stormed into the hut with rage. Her mother noticed immediately and set down the basket she had been weaving. What's wrong? she asked. That hunter Udodi. He rejected me. And do you know why? Because of her, she pointed toward the door where Adugo was working outside. That little witch, she muttered. I knew she was trouble from the moment she stepped into this house. He said he prefers her because she's kind and humble. Can you believe that, mama? The mother's face twisted in disgust. Men are fools. But don't worry, my daughter. We will not let that girl stand in your way. I will make sure she never sees Udodi again. Without wasting another moment, the mistress marched outside, her voice ringing out sharply as she called on Adugo. Adugo! Adugo! Adugo hurried over, her hands still damp from the water she had been using to wash the dishes. Yes, ma! You are forbidden from leaving this compound unless it is for chores. Inkemdelen snapped. I don't want to hear of you speaking to that hunter again. Do you understand? Adugo's heart pounded in her chest, fearful and confused. But I haven't... Don't argue with me. Her mistress cut her off. You will do as I say or I will make your life even more miserable than it is already. Adugo nodded, her throat tight with hushed tears. She had no idea why her mistress was suddenly so angry, but she knew better than to protest. Despite her mistress' efforts to keep her busy with endless chores, Udodi could not get her out of his mind. Every time he closed his eyes, he saw her. He had tried to push her off his mind, but nothing he did worked. He had never felt this way about anyone before, certainly not about someone from a station as low as hers. That night, as he lay in the bed, staring at the ceiling, he made up his mind. He couldn't keep ignoring the truth. He needed to speak to Adugo's mistress and formally express his intentions. He wanted to marry Adugo the next morning. Udo de gathered his courage and dressed in his finest hunting garments. He wasn't a man of many words, but for Adugo, he would find them. His steps were heavy as he made his way towards her house, knowing the conversation ahead would be anything but easy. When he arrived, he was greeted by the harsh voice of Adugo's mistress, who was sitting outside, sorting through cassava. She looked at him. What brings you here, Udodi? she asked. Udo declared his truth and stood there boldly, despite feeling uncomfortable. I have come to speak with you about something important. The mistress raised an eyebrow, but said nothing. I've come to express my interest in your maid, Adugu. I wish to seek your permission to speak with her family and ask for her hand in marriage. For a moment, Nkemdelin said nothing. You want to marry her? <laughs> she let out a bitter laugh, shaking her head in disbelief. You, a respected hunter, want to marry a girl like Adugo? Do you even know who she is? Do you know where she comes from? Udot, Udo de frowned, confused by her response. I know that she's a good woman. That is all I need to know. The mistress' eyes gleamed with malice. Oh, you poor fool. You know nothing. Adugo's father and brothers were thieves. 
They were caught stealing from the market and were executed for their crimes. Her mother died shortly after from the shame. That girl is from a family of criminals. Is that the kind of wife you want, my dear hunter? The words hit Udo differently. He had never heard anything about Adugo's past. Was it true? Could someone so kind and gentle come from such a tainted background? Mkem Delem saw the unease in his eyes and pressed on. You don't want to marry into that kind of family. You deserve better. There are plenty of respectable maidens in this village. Like my daughter Olachi, she would make a good wife for a man like you. Udo stood silent as her words sunk into his mind. He had no reason to doubt her. Adugo had never spoken about her family, but something deep within him resisted the mistress' venom. Could he really trust her? He returned on his heel and left without another word. As he walked back towards the forest, his mind was a storm of doubt and confusion. Later that evening, Udo sought the advice of his father, a wise elder who had seen much of the world. His father listened quietly as Udo recounted the Adugo's mistress accusations. When he finished, his father signed and placed a hand on his son's shoulder. My son, the hearts of men are often filled with jealousy and deceit. I know of Adugo's family. What happened to them was a great injustice. Her father and brothers were wrongly accused because they possessed lands that others coveted. They were innocent, but the village needed scapegoats. And so they were punished. Udodi's eyes widened in surprise. So she comes from a good family? Yes, his father replied. A family that was respected. Until the day false accusations destroyed them. But you, my son, must follow your heart. If Adugo is the woman you wish to marry, do not let the words of others affect you. You have my support in whatever decision you make. Udo denoted, relief flooding through him. His father's words had cleared away the fog of doubt. He had known from the moment he met Adugo that she was the one for him. And now, with his father's blessing, he was more certain than ever. He would not let her past or the lies of her mistress stand in the way of his future with her. He would marry her and together they would rise above the shadows of their pasts. Udodi's determination was renewed and he began to plan his next move. He would need to gather his kinsmen and prepare for the former marriage rites. It was time to claim the woman his heart had chosen. The next morning, Udodi wasted no time. He gathered his kinsmen with the help of his father and informed them of his intentions to marry. His father, a respected member of the king's council, stood by his side and supported his decision. Much to his relief, his kinsmen offered to accompany him when the time came to approach Adugo's family. However, there was still the matter of Adugo's mistress. Udo knew that convincing her would not be easy, but he also understood that he had to make his intentions known regardless of her opinion. She had made it clear that she did not think Adugo worthy of him. But Udodi was not a man to be confused by such shallow judgments. He was prepared to stand his ground no matter how much resistance came his way. That afternoon, he returned to the house where Adugo lived. Adugo, he called gently. She looked up, surprised to see him again. Udodi, what are you doing here? My mistress will be furious if she sees you. Udodi took a deep breath. I'm here for you, Adugo. I've come to ask your mistress for your hand in marriage. Her eyes widened in shock. Marriage? But you can't. I can and I will, Udochi said firmly. 
You are the woman I want to spend the rest of my life with. I won't let anyone, not even your mistress, stop me. Before she could respond, the door to the house swung open and her mistress stormed out. What is this? She asked. Why is this hunter back here speaking to my maid? Udo de walked up to her. I've come to formally ask for Adugo's hand in marriage. I intend to marry her. The mistress' eyes were filled with anger and she crossed her arms. You fool, I've already told you the kind of family she came from. Marry her and you will be married to the daughter of thieves. To shame and dishonor, you are better than this, Udodi. Udodi's expression didn't falter. I've spoken with my father. I know the truth of what happened to her family. They were innocent and I will not let lies about her past stop me from marrying the woman I love. The mistress was furious. You insolent man. I will never allow this marriage to happen. But before she could say more, her daughter Olachi came out. Mother, Olachi said smoothly, stepping forward. Perhaps we should reconsider. If this hunter is so determined, maybe it's time we stopped fighting. Olachi's mother looked at her in confusion. But something in Olachi's eyes told her there was more behind her words. After a moment of hanging back, she nodded. Fine, but don't think this is over. With that, she went back inside the house, leaving Olachi standing with Udodi. You should be careful what you wish for, Udodi, she said softly, a strange smile on her lips. You might not know what you're getting yourself into. Udodi didn't respond. He turned back to Adugo with his eyes filled with reassurance and promised to come back for her. The moment Udodi left, Olachi entered the house and found her mother sitting angrily in the corner. We have to stop this madness, the mother said. That hunter has lost his mind. How could he choose her over you? Olachi sat down beside her mother. He may have refused me, but that doesn't mean this is over, mother. Her mother looked at her curiously. What do you mean? Olachi leaned in closer. We have one more chance to stop this marriage before it happens. If Udo demarries Adugu, I will never have him, and I won't stand for that, but I have a plan. Her mother's eyes gleamed with interest. Go on. Olachi explained her idea. When Adugu is married, it is customary for a close maiden to accompany her to her husband's home for the first eight market days, and I will accompany her. When we arrive at Udodi's house, I will make sure he forgets all about her. Her mother's face broke into wicked smile. And how do you plan to do that, my daughter? I know someone who can prepare a charm, Olachi said confidently. Something to make Udo de fall in love with me. Once I've won him over, Adugo will be nothing to him. The mother's smile widened. Not only will we get rid of Adugo, but you will have the hunter as your husband. Olachi nodded, already thinking of the ways she could win Udodi's affection once they were alone in his house. I will make the arrangements. This marriage will never happen the way Adugo thinks it will. As the wedding preparations began, Adugo found herself overwhelmed by the speed at which her life was changing. The villagers spoke with excitement about the unlikely union between a great hunter and a male maid. Some were supportive while others spread rumors and gossip about her past. On the morning of the wedding, as custom dictated, she was prepared for her transition into womanhood. Olachi stood beside her, feigning support. You look beautiful, Olachi said with a smile that didn't come from her heart. Although they will be pleased, Adugo managed a small smile. Thank you, Olachi. As the time came for Adugo to leave her mistress' house, Olachi followed closely behind.
her mind already working on the plan she had devised. The charm her mother had given her was tucked securely in her clothing, and she was ready to use it the moment they reached Udodi's home. Adugo and Olachi traveled together accompanied by Udodi's kinsmen, who sang songs of blessing and celebration. When they finally arrived at his compound, Udodi's family welcomed them with open arms. The elders blessed the union and Udodi led Adugo into the small hut that would be their home. But that night, as Adugo rested, exhausted from the journey, Olachi made her move. She slipped into Udodi's hut under the cover of darkness and sprinkled the portion into Udodi's evening meal. 